you call them. I can't do this anymore. Left my past all on the floor. What is going on, Ram fam? So today, I'm going to do a review slash rant on the Amazon Prime docu-series called Them. It is about the family of the Emerys. Henry, Livia, which they call Lucky, Ruby Lee, and Gracie. This is a black family that moves to Compton from Chatham County, North Carolina during the Great Migration. So the movie is kind of is made like a mix of Get Out and Lovecraft Country. And the mom and the youngest daughter, they also star in Kevin Hart's uh, new movie. I don't remember what it's called, but it's basically another daddy daycare another single dad trying to raise his child i forgot what it's called but that movie so um over a 10 day period this all white neighborhood terrorizes his family and attempts to get them to cave and to move somewhere else so the very first episode which is day one it begins with the wife lucky she's at home alone and isolated location y'all and home and it reminds me of the same house that's in the movie of uh, beloved all right so she is approached by this strange white woman all right i'm not gonna go into detail because i don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen it yet all right later on okay so we'll look while they're in the car you see them, see the girls in the back seat, they looking at this white media. Well, we're going to call it just regular media, right? Because pretty much that's what it was back in those days. They're looking at books and the magazine, and it's full of white people, right? And the dad is talking about his new job, and the youngest daughter is talking about how school is going to be. You know, they're talking about the new things that they're going to face. They're all excited about this upcoming move, all right? Then here... There's this fact about the Great Migration, that it takes place from 1916 to 1970, and it includes the Northeast, the Midwest, and the West. Okay, and the reason is because it comes with the promise of industrial jobs. All right, now, as it's progressing, you see that this, this real estate agent, she's greeting the family outside of their new home. And this leading neighbor, this nosy lady right her name is betty wendell she's approaching the, the agent and then soon after her comes all the other wives in the neighborhood right and this neighborhood as i described it to you well i'm not going to describe it to you but the way that it functions and it moves it moves like if you remember that old movie edward scissorhands how they all move uh in sync with each other so it's like edward scissorhands and pleasantville put together all right now, you see that they show that the, this contract, and the contract it states that Negroes cannot buy, rent, or lease properties unless they are the domestic servants of Caucasians. Now, you tell me if this is if this isn't the beginning of what Black folks have been saying about how systemic racism is like is built into the foundation of things, and y'all want folks to move on, like it's right there what what even is that all right so then um the first this is the first time that we start to see that the black woman is noticing something and then the white woman starts deferring to the husband and then she crosses out that statement it's like oh don't worry about that it doesn't mean anything okay that that's a message right there then the man in the neighborhood, as we continue on, the man in the neighborhood, they start gathering outside of the home. And lucky she's staying up all night loading her gun. And I think that this right here shows the importance of black, black families owning a weapon. And back in those days, we know that they did. And then when, during the days of the Black Panthers, this is what we were talking about. So she's she's practicing loading her gun she knows how to use it she knows what to do all right and then henry is stating to her that we are not gonna run anymore and he states that this is their house because it came with a promise 
So tell me, what is a promise? Like, what is that? What does that even mean, a promise? Because they got in black and white that them black folks don't even, that's not their house. All right, so as we progress, it's the daytime. The women in the neighborhood, they start lining up outside, outside of the house on this day two, once the men leave for work. So this is their daily routine. The men leave for work and the women line up outside outside of the Emory's household. They playing music, they're making all kinds of racist comments, just doing their best to try to drive them insane. All right, so Lucky is now, she's getting her girls prepared to go to school and she does what a mother does. Hold on, I'm outside y'all. <laughs> And particularly the black women back in those days because you know folks another conversation that can be had is the statements of black women these days aren't as strong as they used to be whether you agree with that or not let me know let me know in the comments but lucky is talking to her girls getting them ready and she tells them that we're gonna do something only today and never ever again and she takes them out the back door all right, now, once uh, Henry, he arrives at his new job, the receptionist, she automatically assumes that he's a cook or a janitor or whatever and is dismissing him. And it's up to who? It's up to another black man that's passing by who works where? He works in the mail room. That's so typical. It's got to be the mail room or the janitor. So, he takes him up to his office. Now, because of stereotypes and how they make make people look and because of the cast type of this particular um, actor I believe that this boss is supposed to be a Jewish man that may become important to you as you continue to watch the show so this black man he has a Jewish boss all right then there's this Miss Vera that you will hear a lot about she makes her appearance and she comes out of Gracie's book and Miss Vera talks a lot through Gracie. So other issues and concerns, okay? So there are, oh Lord, about six or eight episodes. So I'm not going to break down each episode because I really want you to watch the show and leave comments. And if you've already watched the show, go ahead again. Leave me some comments and let's talk about it. You know, what did you like? What did you not like? But as far as the way my brain processed this and conversations that have already taken place or that need to take place, this is what I saw throughout the whole rest of it. Okay, so the, first of all, the show is full of patriarchy and racism. We, we already know that because of the time frame. All right. It shows white women leading their community to take negative actions against others. Betty has an issue and she's leading she's leading other people to come and take actions against her neighbors to try to get somebody to move out of the neighborhood who has every right to live there. Why are white women the ringleaders when it comes to actions against other people and being so negative? Also, what I am seeing is the fact of the men the men in the neighborhood white men are being violent and they're being violent on other people's property and they are not expecting for people to, to retaliate against them and then they go on to name call what is the deal with that that is something that still goes on today white men will come on your property and expect you not to do or say something bad all right next to see black women are trying to keep their children focused, disciplined, and positive all the while. Okay, sorry, I'm not gonna say black women, but let's just keep it lucky. She's trying to keep her children focused, even though we find out that she's dealing with the trauma of rape and losing her own child without therapy. Black women tend to do that. You just try to go forward and live life and, and uh, downplay the importance of your mental health even your medical health like you got to take care of you face what you have been through to properly take care of others um there was a time where lucky 
was freeing other women from this asylum and the black guard let her do so. What message was being conveyed there? You tell me what it is that you saw or that you will see. I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to say, please, if you have not done so already, please take the time to like this video and other videos, subscribe to my channel, and share other videos, and be sure to hit that notifications tab. I have two Facebook pages, one that's simply just called Real Ram T. Lee. That's where I have, you know, my normal everyday chit chats and stuff. And then I have Real Ram T. Lee on YouTube. That's the whole name, Real Ram T. Lee on YouTube. That's where I post daily um, inspirational quotes, other small little videos and stuff. And there's going to be some changes or should I say additions added that I will only be posting on that Facebook page and some others that will be on my Instagram. So if you haven't followed me on Instagram, please go follow me at Illa Redbird on Instagram. All right. So back to this list. With Henry, there's this thing that I see and that we need to talk about and understand that black men go through some things that we would never know or understand and we push them we push them so much to talk or do a certain thing or we judge them for not doing a certain thing or the way that they handle things but you don't know what they go through um this is how they choose to fight and navigate through the world because they can only choose what's best for them through the experiences that they have lived. It shows the black couple being there for each other and not letting outside forces or words determine how they will manage their home. They have enough faith in each other and choose not to let the children talk negatively about the other parent. So while they got the whole entire neighborhood outside their home every day, inside of their home, they are telling each other, we got this, we can do this, we got this. And when things happen to go awry, it's like, don't talk about your dad like that. Don't talk about your mom like that. And they keep support like that. While we continue to talk about the other parent all the time, just simply because, you know, what it, it could be something small because they didn't want to loan us $5. You know, just because it didn't work out between you and the other parent doesn't mean that you should down talk them. And especially not in front of the children. Don't let your children, you know, talk down about their, about their parent. We need to bring black, black families back. We really do. Then, okay, so we got this quote unquote helpful cop and real estate agent. And they're making deals and stuff. Hmm, just had a thought. These might be some spoilers. <laughs> These just might be some spoilers. So I really hope that y'all watched it. But even if you didn't, well, it gives you something to think about while you're watching it. What do you think about these so so-called helpful people, but all along they've been making underhanded deals. You think that they're here to help help you, but they making money off of your back, off of your pain and suffering. And then maybe one of them wants to get out, but they can't get out. They guilt, you know, they want to get out, but they can't because they being blackmailed even harder. Someone that has more power over them. So they have to keep, keep uh, making money off of you, all right? So overall, right, the overall message, black people, are you chasing after white people's dreams? Do you think that the grass is greener on the white side? Why can't we just live our best lives? Do we have to move to the white neighborhoods, go to the white schools, drive the cars that the white people drive? Okay, whether you're the first person or you're replacing another black person, do you have to strive to be like them? If they want you to lead their neighborhoods, can you, should you? Who, who says that their America, their dreams, their neighborhoods is what's the best thing for us? Also, it shows that we're, 
we're believing too hard in the Bible. And we're believing in what white people have said is the correct interpretation that have led us to think low of ourselves and the true African ways and religions. This is how Disney has, has gotten us all this time. Who said voodoo was bad? Why do black people think that? Why black people say voodoo, black magic, all this other stuff is wrong? What's wrong with anim animism? What's wrong with that? Who's who? We got to stop thinking that, that the white man's, you know, religion and the white man's interpretation of the Bible is correct. This is how they use the, the Bible to keep us down. This is how they kept us in slavery and in bondage. And even today, whatever they say, that's how you follow. But yet they use that same Bible to keep doing wrong on their part. Right? So, do we believe in community anymore? Should we fight alone or should we fight with America and the white ways of living? Or should we bring others with us? That leads back to my other statement of when you move into a community, should you continue to fight that battle alone to say, this is my house, I deserve to be here? Or should you bring other families with you? Just imagine what would have happened if the Emory's had, had uh, subleased that house to another black family and had two black families living in that one home or if other black families would have came over and visited a lot more often or they went and visited other black families who were in other neighborhoods and other communities around to show that there's more power that there's more of us bring their presence out and not let each black family that they've heard about fight it alone do you think that would make a difference what does community look like to you? And before I make this uh, last one, I want to say again, if you haven't done so already, please like, share, subscribe, and hit that notifications tab to my channel. Follow me on TikTok and IG at Ellie Redbird. I got some more. And if you would like to be a guest on my show, Hit me up in the comments and let me know that as well. I'm always looking for someone to guest host with me, talk about any topics. And there will be a uh, surprise with some, with some drawings and stuff coming up shortly. So you got to keep your eyes open and tune in for every video. So the lastly, at the end of the show, the message that I saw was so powerful i don't know what the writer intended for us to receive but for me i want to ask you how do you see yourself have you been struggling with your inner being or what people want you to see or how people have imitated you to be don't get tricked by what is in front of you. Ensure that you know you. That you know whether somebody is playing a game with you or not. Don't be tricked by these games and these little flossy, you know, materialistic things and the grass being greener on the other side when you don't really know what's going on inside somebody else's house. We say that all the time. People be putting on. People be putting on. But when you are struggling within yourself and you looking in the mirror, what is it that you really, really seeing and really fighting? What demons are you really fighting if you're fighting any? Because it may all be a mirage. So, again, this was my review on them. For more videos, stay tuned. Leave me some comments so we can talk about this. And just subscribe, share, hit the notifications bell. And this is Real Ram out. I can't do this anymore. Left my past all on the floor I've been trying to keep it moving Now we going north Going up, two, three Up, two, three Got this joy
joy inside of me because I, got I can't do this anymore. Left my past all on the floor. I've been trying to keep it moving, now we going on.